Right, welcome back. Uh, final bit of construction has been finished before primer. So I've put my radiator shields on both sides. Using my push drill, I widened the holes. I think it was one, two, and three, just to give it a better fit. Um, I ran the glue all the way around, and it flitted, fitted flush, absolutely perfect. So I'm glad I widened those holes. So those are glued in now. Um, then you've got the um, forward bulkhead, which is basically that. It's like a cap. You can call it a cap if you want. A nose cap. So I glued that in very, very easy indeed. Um, inside of that, you've got the rear housing wall for the um, front torpedo launcher. Um, that's all glued in from inside. Um, the actual torpedo launcher clear pot, I haven't installed that yet because obviously I've got to paint that and I'll probably um, uh, glue that in on final construction. You can see um, there's a, like a little channel that's formed. But the glue is actually outfilled that in light slightly, and I can call that a panel line. So that's that. On the underneath, then you've got the um, what's it called? Uh, the torpedo emitter, this long pole. So there's a pin and a hole there, so you glue that in, and then you've got like a little slight C channel there. So you push it, push the glue in there as well and push that into place. And then on the underneath, in this uh, section here, I'll just run a bit of glue there just to strengthen it. So that's all dry. And then last but not least, you've got the rear section. If you remember, it didn't look very nice and it had a bit of a hole when I'd filled in the sides. I noticed that there was some holes and gaps in each side, so I filled those in. I've sanded them down slightly, but once primer goes down, It'll give me a better look at what it's going to look like and if it requires further sanding. So now everything is ready and it's all finished. It's now ready for primer. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. As you can see, I've now primed all the pieces and they're looking absolutely fantastic. They really, really are. You can see on the actual body stroke fuselage of the ship it's gone down really well especially around them backs here you can see that they're looking a hell of a lot better than there was before and around the back there where I've filled it in you can barely tell that they've been filled in not bad at all on the wings not bad now what I probably should have done was not glued the baffles on but, you know, there's nothing I can do about it now. I probably should have primed those separate, painted them and then glued them on. But like I said, the wings are looking really nice. Not bad at all. My only concern that pissed me off a bit, or you can see them rib sections out on the wing, there was a seam on there. So I've had to sand it very, very gently so I don't lose none of that detail. Well, like I said, generally they're not looking too bad. You've got the guns as well. Looking nice. And then finally, I think this is the cloaking ring that goes on the front. I've done that separate because uh, I know it's going to be a bitch to paint if I glue it on and try and paint it later. But I'm loving the way these look now. So now that these are more primed. It's now ready for the uh, the main base coat. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. As you can see, I've now painted the green spray paint onto my bird of prey, on all the parts and the main hull. First of all, before I sprayed the green on, I masked off my baffles because I left those in the primer because I want to paint my gun metal on top of the baffles so all those are masked off with normal household masking tape uh, the actual um, radiator shield panels area where the wings connect into I've put um, a bit of masking tape on there as well 
so when I glue my wings in it'll be bare plastic to bare plastic you know with the, with the pinholes on the underneath of the baffles then around the back here where I had the problem with the filling and the rear edges where I had to fill in a bit more after I'd uh, sanded and filled the sides in those have come out really well and I don't really need to do anything with those they are perfect as you can see now the daylight that's coming through the window is actually making this green look lighter than it actually is it's a, like I said it is a bit of a darker green than the lighter green with the sunshine coming through the window now the paint that I went with I've gone back to the army painter and I bought their Goblin Green. It cost me £10 from uh, Wayland's Forge in uh, Birmingham. It's like a games workshop type shop. And it's in Digbeth. So you go 300 mil can. I asked my mate Patrick on YouTube, Coraline. I, I says, you know, what greens do you recommend? Because he did it with an airbrush where I've uh, bought a can. And I found this Goblin Green after looking up some greens. And I said, what do you think? And he says, Wayne, that'll be perfect. So that's what I've bought. To go along with that, much like the gun metal that I've been using over the last year or so, well, the last couple of years, I've bought the uh, Goblin Green and the War Paints. This cost me two seventy nine from eBay, so I'm going to use this for touching up. So all I'm going to do now is just take the tape off, and on the tape of my baffles, paint my baffles, and then the wings will be ready to be glued into the side of the hull. But not looking too bad so far. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. Um, getting the ring, the the rings, the wings ready before they're mounted into the hull. You can see I took the tape off where I'd uh, masked it off, so I can glue bare plastic to bare plastic. And as there's no sunshine coming through the window, you can actually see the true colour of the green. You can see it's a hell of a lot darker compared to the last update. Um, using my round-headed foil because um, I haven't got um the drill bits on me push drill weren't big enough um, I've just twisted those out just to make them slightly larger because the pins on the bottom of here as you can see they are, I just test fitted those are a bit too tight so that's why I've widened those slightly now when it comes to the underneath of the baffles basically what I did is I just uh, got a bit of blue tack rolled it out into a sausage to the entire length of the rear of the baffle so again bare plastic to bare plastic Talking about the baffles, I've um, now painted those in the gun metal. Um, I had to touch up down the side a bit of this panel because I accidentally touched the side. So I got rid of my goblin green, put it into my little pot, and then just with me citadel fine detailing brush, just top those up and topped up around the edges as well. But I've gone a slightly bit overboard with the gun metal, but that is blending nice. So the wings are now ready to be glued onto the side of the hull. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. Um, as you can see, I've now done the wing cannons. So I've left both sides, one on each. Basically what I've done on both sides is I've just gone with the wiring, with the uh, gun metal. And then with this panel here, I've got some 36168 Dunkle Green, Dark Green, and I've uh, painted that and then with these two strip panels there I went with my black green number 40 Revel painted those and then once that all that was dry then we went in my goblin green just to tidy the edges up as you can see in my pot just tidy all the edges up and left that to dry um, on this side which is the underneath of that as you can see I went again went with the 36168 Dunkle Green Green Dark Green and picked out those three panels out and again with the Goblin Green just topped up around the edges to make it look nicer nice straight lines no masking as well then with the actual cannons themselves I painted on with the gun metal as you can see and then lift, left the green bits as per the plans so those are done Moving the wing cannons out of the way, my little pots of paint. Going back to the main body of the bird of prey, you can see there's a hell of a, hell of a lot of masking being done, bottom and top, so I can pick out 
this um, panelling that's going to be red. Now originally what I was going to do is I was going to paint it on with the number 19 red Humbrol acrylic by hand with a brush. But then I thought as I do each coat, because it's probably going to take about 3 or 4 coats, it's going to get lumpy, it's going to get like streaks and it's not going to look as nice as it would spray painted red. So that's the reason I've masked all this off because I'm going to spray paint the red on. And then again, once that's dry, go in with the goblin green in all those little channels just to tidy it up and make it just look like the wings, the actual pattern itself is all red. So let's see what happens when I spray paint the red on. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. As you can see, I've now spray painted the red on the underneath of the wings of the bird of prey. And it's not looking too bad. Basically what I did outside, because it was lovely and sunny outside this morning, I went with my Tamiya Spray TS49 and sprayed it directly on top of the green. I was a bit worried at first within the first few minutes because I thought the green was actually going to really come through the red and I'd have to re-top it up after it dried. But luckily it's dried really, really nice. Left it outside for about an hour and a half because as I said it was still nice and sunny. And then I brought it back in and as you can see it's not looking too bad. So all I've got to do now is just take the paper and the tape off. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. As you can see I've now took all the masking tape off and all the newspaper I used to mask off so I could spray paint the red on for the wing pattern. It's not looking too bad at all. Got a bit of paint bleed here and there as you can see. Nothing too major. Nice straight edges on the front there, not bad at all. Nothing that Corby took care of with the Goblin Green war paint. The biggest challenge is now is painting down these channels to make each panel look separate. So a lot of intricate work ahead. Stay with me. Right, welcome back. As you can see, I've now done all the intricate work down the panel lines of my uh, Bird of Prey wing pattern. Now if you remember from the previous update, I'd just masked all this off, spray painted on the red. So with the uh, Goblin Green War Paint and my Citadel fine detailing brush, I went down each of the channels with the green, did this side first with the first coat, and then did that side second with the first coat. Let it dry, but some of the red was still showing through a little bit, so I went in with the second coat. And uh, you can see like, it looks a hell of a lot better. But the only trouble was, because the channels are so narrow, some of the green actually got onto the top sides of each of the uh, panel sections. So what I did with the number 19 Humbrol Red, I went in and uh, just re-topped up the tops of the uh, panels and some some down the side as well and as you can see it looks a hell of a lot better and I was actually quite chuffed because the number 19 actually blended in really well with the red of the spray so now that's all done I can now start the rest of the detailing under the of the underneath stay with me